hello dear colleagues uh, welcome to our webinar and uh, mm, we will try to review the eurasian union uh, medical devices uh, registration system as you know uh, this system uh, will fully replace the national registration system systems in the Eurasian Union member countries in the next year. Uh, this system came into force in 2017 as alternative to national systems. Uh, but till now there are only five successful registration, five registration certificates uh, until this day. Uh, this system is new and complex, uh, provides different approach to quality, safety and efficacy assessment of medical devices. So there are a lot of things to clear and discuss. Uh, when we dig uh, in the Eurasian Union registration system, it uh, became clear that it's impossible to review all the important points in 45 minutes. It's, it will be very superficial lecture without uh, any mm, practical benefit. Uh, so, uh, we've taken the most critical things from the system, uh, critical from our point of view, of course, and these are practical matters uh, that impact the submission uh, directly. There will be two parts, the agenda is on the screen, First lecture will will cover both theoretical and practical aspects. Uh, first of all, we will review the Eurasian Union legislation in medical devices field, taking into account uh, the questions and comments from our clients and colleagues who call this new system complex and confusing. We will review the things that are typically not reviewed in official webinars. Also, we will review the structure of Eurasian Union legislation because there are a lot of normative acts with different names, agreements, decisions of the Council, decisions of the Board, decisions of the Collegium, decisions of the Commission, etc. Uh, we will make uh, some comparisons between uh, European Union MDR, National Russian Registration System, and new Eurasian system to understand uh, the similarities and uh, differences. Uh, the most uh, important thing, uh, what is medical device in accordance with new rules, and what are risk classes? Uh, we will also review uh, these topics. Uh, the second point of our lecture is uh, Eurasian registration uh, dossier and its structure. Uh, we plan to hold uh, our next webinar in June. Uh, please check out our LinkedIn account for the date of event. Uh, yeah, so uh, the date is 29th of June, yeah, mm -hmm. already know. Uh, yes, uh, so these are uh, the topics for the next webinar. Uh, we will review the conformity assessment routes, the stages of uh, registration process, types of testing and trials, especially clinical trials, because it brings new approach to clinical evaluation of medical devices, and uh, we will face the trials with the human subjects. And we will review the quality manufacturing system plans inspection. Uh, as you know, the Eurasian system still updating and adjusting till now. The details can change and I can only say that we will see how it will work in reality. So let's start with the Eurasian Union legislation. Uh, first of all, uh, let's understand uh, how it works here. Uh, the hierarchy of the laws in Eurasian Union is the following. Uh, the first, it's uh, World Trade Organization legislation, namely agreements. 
uh, the basis of economic structure and economic relationships in the Union. The next second point it's Eurasian Union legislation. Uh, please note that we will classify the legislation documents of the Union in our own manner applicable to our practical purposes. Uh, globally speaking, the high-level law is the Treaty on the Eurasian Economic Union um, that was signed in May 2014 uh, by the leaders of Belarus, Kazakhstan and Russia and came into force on 1st January 2015. Uh, treaties aiming for Armenia's and Kyrgyzstan accession to the Eurasian Economic Union were signed in October and December 2014, respectively. Armenia accession treaty came into force in January 2015. Uh, Kyrgyzstan's accession treaty came into effect in August 2015. In August 2015. It should be noted that Eurasian Union is purely economic union, not political organization. The next level acts and uh, decisions of the Eurasian Economic Commission at its executive body of the Union. The decisions and recommendation of the board or collegium of Eurasian Economic Commission also belongs to this level. We will review this level in detail because here we can find all the documents that regulate uh, reg regulates medical devices life cycle. And we should take into consideration uh, the national legislation on Eurasian Union member countries in the aspects that are not regulated by Eurasian laws. For example, medical devices samples importation for testing in Russia should be performed in accordance with the national rules. But it may change when the harmonized importation procedure will come into force. Uh, here you can see the current legislation on medical devices in Eurasian Union. Uh, it's information from official website and its uh, official point of view. Uh, so uh, here you can see the QR code. It's a direct link to this page. So you can uh, use this QR code and reach uh, this page uh, from your smartphone or computer laptop. Uh, so the high level law is the agreement on common principles and rules for circulation of medical products, medical devices and medical equipment. Please note the definition here. Uh, again, we have medical products and explanation in brackets that uh, these are medical devices and medical equipment. As you know, there are only medical devices, uh, only medical devices definition in Russia. We haven't medical products, medical appliances, medical equipment, etc. So this should be harmonized. Uh, and uh, uh, this is done uh, in order to harmonize the legislation of all member countries who still have medical product and medical equipment definition in their legislation. Uh, the next, uh, we can have 25 acts of the Eurasian uh, Economic Commission. 10 decisions of the Council of the Eurasian Economic Commissions. 11 decisions of the Board, uh, Collegium of the Eurasian Economic Commissions. 4 recommendations of the Board uh, of the Eurasian Economic Commission. So we have about 50 laws regulating the medical devices circulation in Eurasian Union. The main problem here from my point of view is the following. As you know, MDR includes 123 articles, uh, 17 annexes, and it's about uh, 175 pages document. Uh, but this one big document that includes comprehensive information on medical devices regulation. Eurasian Union regulations consist of 50 uh, separate documents. There is no problem to print and bind them in one folder, but sometimes we find here some light discrepancies in approach and rules and also 
uh, duplicates of terminology and this definition are slightly different. If we arrange these laws in the form of our favorite pyramid, yeah, it's turn out like this. First level, uh, it's top, top level, first level, it's Eurasian Union Treaty and Agreement on Common Principles and Rules for Circulation of Medical Products. These are two main documents on this level, treaty and agreement. Second level, uh, Eurasian Eco Economic Commission and Board Acts and Decision. Uh, the most documents developed uh, at this level. And the third level, these are the recommendations and explanations. There is a lack of such documents due to the novelty of the procedure itself. The most explanation we can get on the seminars of our national expert authorities in oral form, but the matter of law interpretation has a serious impact here. Uh, they have some different points of view on the same thing I'm talking about, the experts. Experts have different point of view and a different interpretation of the same uh, laws. Um, uh, let's review the most important laws. Treaty on the Eurasian Economic Use Union is the main document describing the principles, structure, developing of the union, etc. Agreement on common principles and rules for circulation of medical products, established common principles and rules for the circulation of medical devices within the union in order to form a common market of medical devices. Also, this document includes core definitions. What is medical devices? What is release of medical devices? And what is circulation of medical devices? Uh, the most important documents of the second level are the following. Uh, Eurasian Union Commission decision num number 46 on rules of registration and safety, quality and efficacy evaluation of medical devices. Uh, we will review these documents in details. Uh, Eurasian Commission decision number 27 on approval of general safety and performance requirements for medical devices, requirements for the labeling and operational documentation. It's, uh, uh, please note, it's full analog of Annex first uh, GSPR in the MDR 2017 slash 745 and uh, uh, Eurasian Union Commission decision uh, number 28 on approval of uh, medical devices uh, technical testing rules uh, and the next Eurasian Union Commission decision number 29 on approval of medical devices clinical and clinical and uh, clinical laboratory trial studies rules and decision number 38 on approval of medical devices testing for biological action evaluation rules uh, so the names of these documents are speak for themselves and uh, please pay your attention to the commission decision number uh, 46 on the rules of registration this document is just important as order 14 uh, 16 uh, rules of registration it's cornerstone of russian national legislation registration procedure uh, we will review uh, the decision 46 uh, later in the section on uh, dossier structure Uh, also, please pay your attention to the points uh, 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 5, 6 and 7. Uh, these are the rules of technical, clinical and biological testing. If we remember Russian national legislation, all these requirements are included in order to N, and it's the only one document that regulates all types of testing. But here we have three separate documents. Uh, uh, the next, uh, it's continuation of the table, uh, number eight, it's uh, uh, Eurasian Union Commission decision number 42 on approval of the list of medical devices to be classified as, as measuring instruments. Uh, collegium decision 
173 on approval of the classification rules of medical devices depending on their potential risk of use decision number 46 on the medical devices nomenclature in the eurasian economic union and please note that currently uh, that this classification i'm talking about uh, eurasian union classification so the classification is fully harmonized with gmdn general medical device nomenclature finally uh, decision number 116 on the differentiation criteria of medical device elements for the purpose of its registration and decision number 123 on the criteria for the inclusion in one registration certificate of several modification of a medical uh, device related to one type of medical device in accordance with the nomenclature so it's uh, rather clunky english but uh, it's it's possible to understand what uh, they're trying to say uh, and uh, it's a third um, level documents these are recommendations uh, these documents contains some detailed explanation on particular matters number 13 uh, collegium recommendation number uh, 14 uh, on methodological recommendation for examination of safety quality and effectiveness of medical devices number uh, 14 uh, it's recommendation number 17 on the list of standards uh, I'm talk it's I'm talking about the list of harmonized standards in Eurasian Union uh, recommendation number 25 on the criteria for classifying products as medical devices in the Eurasian Economic Union a recommendation number 29 on methodological recommendation on the content and structure of the medical device registration dossier documents please pay at your attention that uh, for example, recommendation and decision uh, can uh, may have the same numbers, but these are different documents. Please, please note. Uh, and uh, mm, I would like to note recommendation number 17 on the list of standards. It's important document that contains a, a table of harmonized standards and specific sections and points from the standards. Uh, that we should uh, use to demonstrate their conformity to GSPR. We will review some of these documents in details because they have a direct impact uh, on the regulatory department's registration activities. Uh, some important documents that I would like to show separately. Uh, commission decision number 26 on the special mark of medical devices circulation here you can see the special mark that should be printed on the labeling should be included on the labeling after their registration all the devices uh, uh, registered in Eurasian Union should bear this mark and uh, collegium decision number 174 on approval of the rules for monitoring the safety quality and effectiveness of medical devices that includes event reporting form it's uh, about the post registration vigilance activity uh, to uh, recap uh, this section so uh, what we can tell about this as you can see there are a lot of documents as we said before there are about 50 in total and among them are about 30 documents that have a direct impact on registration dossier preparation process it's definitely more than amount of the documents that regulates the national Rus russian registration system there are about five times as many of them we uh, recommend uh, you to read the documents mentioned in the table it's obligatory part because these are uh, 16 obligatory documents that directly impact the regulatory activities for medical devices registration 
Our next topic is to compare some aspects of uh, Eurasian Union regulation with the Russian national regulation to understand the scope of difference. Uh, let's look at this table where general differences in circulation are summarized. Some differences are obvious, of course, but uh, require some explanation. Uh, so, uh, left column, it's national Russian legislation. Uh, some points are obvious. Circle, uh, the medical devices regis are registered in accordance with the Russian national legislation uh, may uh, circulate uh, in the territory of Russian Federation only. Uh, medical device registered in accordance with the Eurasian legislation can, may circulate in the territory of Eurasian member states where device is registered. So these are five con uh, countries. Uh, Authorized representative of the manufacturer in Russia is uh, responsible for medical device only uh, Russian Federation territory. Uh, authorized representative in Eurasian Union is responsible for circulation of medical devices on the territory where its medical device is registered. Uh, operational documentation uh, during the Rus Russian national procedure should be drawn up in uh, Russian language. But in Eurasian Union, uh, we should take into account that uh, these are national languages of member countries, for example, Armenian, Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan. So uh, instruction for use for the final user should be prepared, should be drawn it up in uh, national language. Uh, the documents in uh, during the Russian national um, registration procedure should be approved by the manufacturer. In Eurasian Union it's possible to approve the documents by the uh, authorized representative in Eurasian Union. And uh, uh, the most important uh, think it's number five it's different approach to conformity to conforming quality and effectiveness and safety of medical devices uh, as you can see uh, we have brand new types uh, of uh, um, requests and requirements uh, so, uh, let's compare the uh, structure of the dossier. Uh, left column, it's uh, Russian national requirements to the registration dossier and right column, it's Eurasian Union uh, requirements to the dossier. Uh, as, uh, um, as I said before, um, uh, Russian national dossier includes application for state registration and approximately 11 uh, additional documents including technical testing report, toxicology testing report, expert conclusion from the first stage, permission for clinical evaluation, clinical evaluation report, expert, expert conclusion from the second stage. So uh, it's uh, of course it's only part of the do of the documents. Uh, I would like to mention the most important documents. Uh, what about the Eurasian Union dossier? So uh, it, it will include application for the registration, application for the expertise and uh, approximately 30 additional documents including technical testing report, toxicology testing report, clinical trials report, uh, manufacturing plant inspection report, post marketing surveillance plan and expert conclusion of a reference country. Uh, so. As you can see, uh, we have brand new types of the documents in Eurasian dossier. These are manufacturing plant inspection report, uh, PMSP, expert conclusion of reference country. We will review them later in detail. Uh, the next question, 
uh, what is medical device in accordance with Eurasian Union legislation and how far this definition from uh, Russian and European Union definitions. Uh, let's uh, look at this table. You are familiar with uh, Russian federal law 323FZ and article 38, its na national definition of medical devices. So medical devices are any instrument, apparatus, appliances, equipment, materials and other devices and so on. Uh, which function is not implemented by pharmacological, immunological, genetic or metabolic effects on the human body. Uh, the definition of medical device in Eurasian Union is included in Article uh, 1 of the Agreement of on Common Principles and Rules, its first level document. Please note that this is the only document that contains this definition in all Eurasian Union legislation. Uh, the documents of the second level doesn't contain the explanation what is medical device and some of our colleagues uh, experienced uh, light stress uh, when they cannot find the definition of what is medical device in Eurasian Union. So keep calm and read the agreement. So uh, as you can see the uh, definition is very is very close to the Russian national definition so uh, in many aspects uh, 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 but uh, I would like to mention that finally we have uh, this uh, very important thing uh, so the last sentence however can be supported by drugs so finally we've got this update in uh, definition uh, of uh, medical device in Eurasian Union. Uh, the next interesting, the next uh, very interesting things we should mention some interesting definitions, some of them are new for the registration process if we will compare with the Russian national le uh, legislation. Accessories to the medical device, it's not absolutely new. Uh, so, products that are not medical devices, but they are intended by the manufacturer to be used uh, together with one or several uh, medical devices to enable the medical devices to be used in accordance with the intended purpose. This is very uh, well-known uh, definition. It's very close to MDR definition and national definition, but uh, new definition is component parts of the medical devices. Uh, in, in green here on the slide. It's very difficult to translate in English uh, Russian word uh, I haven't found the exact synonym in English, exact translation in English. It's a word with, with a very broad definition in Russian. So the products that are not a medical device or accessory, including blocks, parts, product elements, materials, spare parts intended by the manufacturer for use in a medical device or together with a medical device. So uh, it's um, for me it looks these are some pitfalls with this definition. Uh, for example, um, electronic expansion plate for the biochemical analyzer theoretically fall into this definition we can expect we can expect that there are maybe some issues with these two definitions uh, we would like to have more explanation from our authorities on this matter and uh, consumables uh, theoretically all the plastic consumables for the uh, automated uh, biochemical or dna rna analyzer such as plastic tube strips sample cups plastic panels, washing fluids, system fluids, etc. Uh, can fall into this group. Uh, what about uh, borderline devices? Uh, let's review the third level documents, recommendation number 25 on the criteria for classifying products as medical devices. And let's refer to the section 3.5 to understand the approach for classifying. 
the intended use of a medical device is one of the main criteria for classifying a product as a medical device. The use of medical device must be suitable for its medical purpose. Such medical purpose should be single or primary. And how this approach works. For example, disinfectants and disinfection equipment. If these products are intended for medical use, then they are classified as medical devices. Uh, let's uh, look at this table. Uh, uh, here, it's uh, it's uh, all, all the samples are from uh, this recommendation. It's very useful document. Uh, we uh, recommend to carefully read um, this recommendation. For example, uh, uh, recirculators designed for air purification in medical organization. These are medical devices, but uh, the devices designed for air pur purification is in house households. These are not medical devices. Uh, the next uh, example, air disinfection equipment for use in medical organizations. It's medical devices. Uh, insecticides, repellents, remedies for headlights are not medical devices. Equipment for sterilization and disinfection of medical devices, of course, some medical devices, uh, but disinfectants that not intended for special treatment of medical devices are in uh, right part of this table. These are not medical devices. Another example, products for rehabilitation and sports. So you can see uh, the examples in the table. Uh, for example, cooling bags for pain relief, elastic bandages and tapes, uh, exercise tests, uh, stress test equipment, uh, used to assess physiological body functions. So these are medical devices. Uh, fitness trackers that not provide specific medical information are not medical devices. Fitness club treadmills are not medical devices. Uh, uh, yes, uh, so uh, the other types of products reviewed in these documents, uh, these are uh, hygiene products, cosmetic products, uh, rehabilitation equipment, personal protective equipment, software, packaging for medical devices and medicines, drug device products. Uh, all these uh, borderlines, uh, borderline products are included in this recommendation. So again, it's very, very useful document for the applicant. Uh, uh, again, uh, we recommend to review the recommendations carefully. Uh, and you will receive the answers for the most of uh, classification questions. The next important thing is uh, risk classification in Eurasian Union. Let's compare the risk classification in uh, MDR, uh, Russian national classification, and Eurasian classification. As we can see, the risk classification of medical devices is the same in Eurasian Union and uh, Russia, Kazakhstan and Belarus. The Euro uh, European Union classification uh, have more detailed first risk class. Uh, Eurasian Union classification have only one first risk class. So there was an attempt uh, there was an attempt to invent the European approach to risk classification, but uh, now we can see that there is only one uh, first risk class. Uh, one, one of the most important topics of this uh, lecture, uh, general safety and performance requirements, GSPR, it's a new approach. This is the same approach used in MDR. Let's remember the Annex, Annex 1, Chapter 1 of MDR. 
devices shall achieve the performance intended by the manufacturer and shall be designed and manufacturing in such a way that during normal conditions of use they are suitable for their intended purpose. It's, this is the cornerstone of GSPR. The uh, Eurasian Commission decision number 27 on approval of general safety and performance requirements for medical devices is uh, largely repeats the annexed one of MDR. So again, here is a QR code. Uh, it's a direct link to these documents. To the to, to these documents, I'm talking about <coughs> decision number 70, uh, 27. And uh, let's review the structure of decision number 27. The document includes uh, definitions, again, what is active medical device, safety of medical device, efficacy of medical device, what is IVD device, uh, what is incident, undesirable effect, and so on. General safety and performance uh, requirements applicable to all kinds of medical devices and uh, general safety and performance requirements applicable to particular cases, to uh, IVD and uh, other devices. So labeling requirements, uh, requirements regarding the information on medical device, uh, requirements to the proofs of compliance to general safety and performance requirements. Uh, we can see that this is another very important document that contains uh, direct requirements uh, how to prove quality, efficacy and safety of medical device. Uh, but practically speaking, we're, we are interested in the appendix second, appendix two of, to this decision because this is the part of the registration dossier. It's a form for providing information on product compliance with safety uh, and uh, efficiency requirements. And we have a lot of questions and concerns how to fill this form correctly. It's brand new document for registration process. We haven't such a document in our national system. Uh, these documents illustrate so-called new approach to quality, safety and efficacy evaluation. It's an example how to fill this table. It's possible to use a referential way and direct way of compliance confirmation. Uh, a referential way, you should use third party confirmation. For example, testing laboratory reports where conformity to the recognized standards is demonstrated. Uh, this data should be included in the table. Direct way. It's the manufacturer's own data, own test reports. It's hard to say now how it will work. So we uh, should consider the uh, referential way. So uh, if we look at this table, uh, in the first column, uh, it's just a text. It's uh, appropriate point from the GSPR. The second, it's applicability of this point to your, to your medical device, to your particular case method of assessment, so uh, application of standards from the list. Uh, uh, the, it's a list of harmonized standards in the Eurasian Union. Uh, here in column four, it's uh, mm, we should include the document uh, that regulates this matter. Uh, and uh, uh, in column five should be included, uh, we, we, here we're talking about the risk management, and here we include the risk management data on our medical device. The next uh, important thing, economic operators in Eurasian Union. Uh, they are differing from economic operators mentioned in the MDR. First of all, there is uh, no definition what is economic operator in Eurasian Union. There are uh, the following players, uh, applicant, manufacturer, uh, and authorized representative of the manufacturer. There are uh, not definitions of the importer or and distributor. Uh, they just didn't fall under Eurasian regulation. 
Here you can see the definitions of the applicant, manufacturer and authorized representative of the manufacturer from decision number 46. Mm, it should be noted that uh, the scope of responsibility of authorized representative in Eurasian Union is larger than in Russia. The authorized representative in Eurasian Union have bears a lot of obligations and post-marketing safety monitoring of medical device is most important obligation. Uh, also, we have a <coughs> draft of the law <coughs> of a project. Uh, let me let me slightly digress from the topic. Uh, I would like to know that there is a project that authorized representative in uh, Russia should notify the authority concerning the imported medical devices during five working days and uh, have to provide the lot numbers or serial numbers, numbers of devices, manufacturing date, expiry date. So it's not clear Mm. It should be an authorized representative or distributor who importing these medical devices. So we will see. Uh, this information should be mm, uploaded to the electronic database. So the I just would like to say that the authorized representative is very important for you. Uh, it should be taken into consideration during the preparation to start the mm, all the registration activity but uh, we should note uh, that we can find the same definition in different documents and this definition will be slightly different it's an element of uh, confusion uh, let's check uh, who is the manufacturer if we will compare the definitions in the uh, decision number 173 and number uh, 46, there will be some differences. If we will read uh, these uh, definitions, we can find the difference uh, manufacturer of a medical device here in green. So uh, uh, the last two uh, sentences and who are responsible for the safety, quality and effectiveness of the medical device. Uh, we've lost a huge part of the sentence. Uh, there are not any responsibilities for the manufacturer in decision 173. So, uh, also it should be noted um, uh, that there is no requirement for PRRC, a uh, person responsible for regulatory compliance like in MDR. So this point is, is unclear in Eurasian legislation. Also, there is not a specific unique uh, device identification system, uh, UDI as an MDR, but we have our national product uh, identification system, track and trace, Chesny Znak in Russian. Uh, now it impacts now it impacts only medic medicinal products, but there is an initiative uh, to apply this system also to the medical devices also. We have pilot project with several types of medical devices manufactured in Russia. Uh, it starts some years ago. Uh, and uh, a return to our topic. So we hope that all these definitions will be finally harmonized. Mm, but it's also a good idea to have a, a dictionary or glossary uh, of definitions in the Eurasian Union. Uh, what about transition period? Uh, please pay your attention to this very important document, decree uh, just a second, decree number 28 in March uh, this year, 2021, the Collegium of Eurasian Commission adopted the amendments to the agreement on the common principles and rules. And here is a uh, QR code, uh, it's a link to this uh, document. And uh, 
uh, article uh, concerning that transition period. Uh, as you remember, in the old uh, version of agreement on common principles and rules uh, was stated a final day of, of validity for all the national registration certificates. And, and the date was December 21st of 2021. Uh, after this date, uh, in accordance with the previous version of um, agreement, all the national marketing authorization for medical device should be terminated and all the devices should be re registered re registered again in accordance with Eurasian rules. And we are very happy that the uh, uh, realization has come that about uh, 30 uh, thousand medical devices must be uh, re registered by the end of this year and it's unreal. The situation now is the following. It is allowed now that the products registered under national rules can circulate on the territory of this state only. So already registered marketing authorization will not be terminated after December 31st uh, this year. Also, it's allowed to make amendments in the registration dossier until uh, 2027 year. Until the end of 2021st, products can be registered in accordance with the national rules and after 2021st, only according to the rules of Eurasian Union. Uh, the next topic is the structure of Eurasian Union registration dossier. Uh, generally speaking, the structure of the dossier will be the following. We should include the information on the efficacy and safety in accordance with GSPR described in the Commission decision number 27. Uh, we've already discussed the basic approach and how we can demonstrate the conformity of our device. We will review this topic in details in the second part of our lecture, in the next, next part. Uh, quality of the medical device should be confirmed by the quality management system inspection for 2A sterile, 2B and third risk class devices and post-market surveillance report. The project of such document should be included in the dossier. Uh, we will review the quality management system inspections uh, in the second part too. And the final part here is administrative part. Uh, the document should be provided in accordance with the list in Appendix 4 to the Commission decision number 46. Uh, this part we will review right now and also we will check which documents are principally new. The main document that regulates the <clears throat> registration procedure is the Commission decision number uh, 46, as I said before. Uh, this document has the same meaning for registration process in Eurasian Union as Order 14. Uh, 16 for Russian national uh, registration. The document have uh, 29 pages and uh, 11 annexes. Uh, these annexes have 40 pages. We will um, review uh, some points in details. Uh, so, for example, uh, points four and five, these are the main conditions. Uh, registration and examination of a medical device are mandatory conditions for its release into circulation within the Union. So it's uh, uh, it's obvious, so uh, all the medical devices should be registered. And point five, before submitting an application uh, for registration and, and examination of medical device to the authorized body, the applicant collects evidences of the safety and effectiveness of the medical device and prepares the relevant registration dossier. Next point, 
point six what we should do to prepare the registration dossier in accordance with these new rules. Uh, point six, in order to prepare the registration dossier, the applicant receives preliminary consultation from an expert organizations, if necessary. Uh, so uh, we will see again, I, I say it again, we will see how it will work. And uh, B, conduct technical tests, uh, studies, uh, biological studies or toxicological studies uh, and uh, uh, for uh, medical devices with measurement function uh, the type of measuring instrument should be approved. And C, conduct clinical trials research in accordance uh, with the rules. Uh, so And please note that we should get uh, permission to start the clinical trials. We will review this matter in the second part. So to start the clinical trials in Eurasian Union, uh, you should apply a special application and get the permission. Uh, concerning the uh, mutual recognition procedure and uh, uh, how it e how it will work, uh, just a second. Mm. Yeah, uh, let, let's let's return to the structure of the dossier. Excuse me. Uh, so, points uh, 16 and 17, uh, for the uh, registration of medical device, the applicant choose the reference state and the states of recognition. The applicant should, should choose at least one concerned state. It's not possible to submit the dossier in a reference state only. At least one concerned state should be also chosen. The uh, requirements to the dossier are briefly described in the point uh, 17. The applicant submits the following documents to the authorized body, expert organization of the reference state. So A, A applications for the examination and registration of a medical devices. B, registration dossier uh, in electronic form uh, now we haven't a possibility to submit in uh, electronic form. Uh, it's it's better to submit in in paper right now. And see, uh, uh, these are copies of payment orders confirming the state uh, state due payment uh, in uh, reference country mm, and concerned countries. So the Annex uh, 2 to the decision number 46. Uh, these are the forms of uh, application forms for expertise of the device. And the next Annex number 3, it's application form for the registration of uh, medical device. These are very similar forms from Annex two and annex three. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't uh, got an answer to the question why we need to separate documents. Maybe it's reasonable to combine all the inf information in one application because the risk of typos and discrepancies will arise if we will have to separate application. Unfortunately, we haven't got an answer. Mm. And uh, concerning the list of documents for registration of medical device, it's Annex 4. It contains 30 items. This is comprehensive list uh, of medical devices that should be included in the registration dossier. Please pay your attention uh, to this table. It's table from this uh, Annex 4 
and uh, please pay attention to the structure here we have in the uh, first in the second column we have the name of the document uh, here we have uh, in the next columns these are risk classes and separately IVD so when we see the plus symbol it means that we should provide this document so the last column it's how the document should be approved does it requires notarization or apostille uh, and we will review several documents from this list also i would like to recommend uh, you the electronic service on common market web portal it's uh, it's generate the list of documents automatically uh, so here is the link and uh, 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 first of all uh, it's qr code it's a link to this resource it's official web portal of medical devices common market in eurasian union uh, there is an uh, electronic service on generating the list of the documents depending on the risk class so <coughs> you should choose this service find your risk class and uh, push the button uh, start and it automatically generate the list uh, of the documents uh, unfortunately it's available only in russian so the portal uh, translated partially uh, so we still waiting when the english version of this portal full english version of this portal will be available new types of the documents in the dossier first of all uh, new documents it short brief on medical devices or short description there is a form for these documents uh, it's in the end of addendum 4 it's a new document but if you submitted the dossier in Kazakhstan this document is not new for you it looks the same as short brief in Kazakhstan national registration system uh, the next new document is marketing history it's document number 12 in the list it's applicable for devices that have more than two years of marketing history again it's not it's it's not uh, something absolutely new for the people who submitted the dossier in kazakhstan point uh, 13 information on recalls and non-desirable events point uh, 27 service manual this document was not required for registration in accordance with the Russian national procedure but last year we've got a lot of requests from authorities ask us to provide the service manual and installation documents that are not used by the final customer I'm talking about the healthcare professionals uh, these documents are required during the installation and putting the device into service <clears throat> but uh, we have a lot of requests in accordance with uh, during the uh, national registration procedure uh, so maybe our authorities uh, trying somehow to harmonize the requirements uh, uh, point 28 it's manufacturing plant inspection report we will discuss uh, manufacturing plant inspection as i said in the second part and uh, pmsp it's post marketing surveillance plan plan it's document number 29 well, we can make a parallel with mdr it's very similar document and uh, uh, Mm, here how to fill the form please pay your attention to the recommendation number 29 uh, it's very useful document for an applicant these documents contains direct some direct recommendation how to do this and that so that's all for the new documents uh, and technical file it's the mysterious part of the webinar uh, just because the technical file is not existing in the rules of registration uh, the technical file is not included in the annex 4 in the list of documents there is not technical file definition in commission decision number uh, 46 the rules of registration 
technical file is not mentioned in the recommendation number 29 but the technical file appears in commission decision commission decision number 29 on approval of medical devices clinical and clinical laboratory trials and there is a definition technical file is the documented data confirming the compliance of the medical device with the general requirements for the safety and effectiveness of medical devices the requirements for the labeling and operational documentation for them approved by the Eurasian Economic Commission. So we understand that we need technical file for the clinical trials, but by the way, we should provide the same information in the dossier, and these are separate documents in the list, but these documents are not calling technical file. Uh, we've got a personal point of view from an expert from authority, we don't need technical file for first and 2a risk class devices because we shouldn't perform clinical trials in these cases uh, but technical file we should prepare only for uh, 2b and third risk class devices that fall into clinical trials the recommendation number 29 also contains the guidance on the content content of the technical file in the Annex 3. There should be the specific section. So it's general information. Technical file should contain the following information on medical device name, general description, intended users, principles of operation, description of all parts of the device. Uh, section uh, 2 description of the medical device uh, the technical file should contain a list of the principal characteristics dimensions and operation instruction of the medical device its versions and accessories which are available available in the technical documentation uh, section 3 link to similar uh, let's call it predicator device and previous modification of the medical device. Section 5, medical device design and development. Section 8, GSPR compliance. Of course, I, I talking about uh, only several parts of uh, technical file. So uh, it's uh, content of technical file is fully described in, uh, in this annex. Uh, annex 3 to the recommendation number 29 and uh, uh, I uh, think that's all for this mysterious document uh, and uh, uh, as I as I see we discussed all the points that we've planned in our agenda I just would like to add some words concerning the web resources where you can find the details uh, the common market portal uh, here is the link uh, it should be main resource for a new registration system. The uh, register of approved medical devices is also here. Of course, it will be very useful when this web website will be finally completed and filled with uh, information. Now we can find only separate section here. Uh, but some electronic services working right now. And the uh, next uh it's the most important resource it's eurasian commission portal here is the link and here you can find all the documents that we've already discussed here here is the links uh, direct links to this document so uh and uh, it uh, it uh, mm, what we will discuss in our next webinar it's uh, briefly overview uh, what we uh, will discuss in the next part. So, uh, dear colleagues, uh, uh, I, I think that's all for today. See you on our next uh, uh, lecture. Uh, thank you very much. Here you can find the uh, our contact details and how to reach our uh, business development department so thank you bye